Hello and good morning. The students are in the queue. I'm letting them in in the lesson. Okay, very good morning. Um, students are joining in one by one. A <clears throat> uh, few students you have joined. I'm letting the other students in. So if you can hear me, uh, can you please give me some confirmation? Is my voice good to you? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello, Marina. You're... Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, I can. I can very well. Okay. So you can always uh, write through the um, chatting option. Yes, no, very good or anything. And of course, we will have a question answer session at the end of the uh, <clears throat> session. Let's wait for a few more students. One, two, three, four, five. Max, most of the students have already joined. So. Can you please uh, write through your keyboard? Your keyboard is going to be your friend today. Of course, a pen and a calculator along with some pages and paper. So I hope all these things are handy and is uh, surrounded by you. Or these are uh, like, uh, uh, okay, okay. So give me some confirmation <clears throat> uh, by writing. Is my voice good? Can you hear me clearly? write something yes we can marina thank you very much yes zakia alexandra perfectly well done thank you very much karina yep with a smiley <laughs> lovely yeah you know why i asked you to do so <clears throat> because throughout the lecture you're going to write your questions and answers of my questions through this way yeah that's a, a better way of doing it okay other students are in the queue <clears throat> i'm letting them in in the lecture so, yeah, we're just going over introductory talkie talkie. At first, um, um, of course, I'd like to uh, thank you and congratulate all of you on behalf of accounting lecture that's behind me. <laughs> There's a green screen though, as a studio setup. And uh, <clears throat> all, of, all of us uh, uh, came to know each other through Facebook. <clears throat> okay, I'm admitting the students still, still one by one. It's just 10 o'clock, three past 10 in the morning. <clears throat> excuse me so yeah facebook is not all about fun social community and uh, so much help surrounding there well, thank you mr zuckerberg <laughs> okay so uh i think uh, there are one is our 80 students uk uk study support group and uh, another one is um <clears throat> independent group there is another one they are very good as well and um, hello jane good to hello. see you yeah you're all right yes thank you lovely lovely i hope you can hear me clearly yeah and see me as well yes hello janice janice is there uh, as well. uh, uh, hi. how do you pronounce your name sorry go ahead janice i said how to pronounce your name oh how to pronounce my name good one <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can call me Elias. Yeah. Oh, it's Elias. Elias, Elias. nice. To it's it's a Greek name, it. though, but it's a. I, I was about to say, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's an Arabic name as well. Okay, yeah. very good to see all of you. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm just going to mute all of you. Yeah, whenever needed, we'll unmute you. Uh, it's good to have some eye contact. <clears throat> and uh, still, we're doing the introductory talkie talkie. It's just uh, five past 10 in the morning. And we are ready to go. Definitely, we are ready to go. So, uh, as I mentioned, if you have missed already, your friend for today is this keyboard, your keyboard, not my keyboard. Of course, my keyboard, I'm going to write. Your keyboard, you're going to, going to write your questions and answers of my question. Yeah. And uh, you must be ready with a pen. I'm having a digital pen, but you should have your pen, whatever you like. Yeah, I, I mostly prefer a big calculator, <laughs> but whatever calculator is you do have, please have it handy. And get, I, uh, did you print it out? How many of you? Can you please write me? Oh, well done. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, Janice. And uh, can you people write me that, yes, I have printed it out. If it is not, uh, don't worry. Um, I'm going to share the screen with you people. Okay, I'm getting some answers from uh, Alexandra uh, printed, Marina. Yes, I have, Karina, yes, well done. Good, good, good. Yes, super duper well done. <clears throat> so what I'm doing, uh, this is my screen. I hope everybody can see it. I do have the printed out. <clears throat> Just to, before we start with the exam tips and goal practice, uh, let's go a little bit of introductory talky talky. <clears throat> Excuse me, what is happening? I need some water. Okay, my name is Elias. Full name is Elias Rubel. I'm a qualified chartered accountant from ACCA. I'm an ACCA member. I'm a chart, uh, certified accounting technician, an MBA from Anglia Ruskin University, and an educator. I've been teaching since 2006. It's been 15 years almost. I've been teaching. I uh, I helped thousands of accounting technician students. Uh, they have passed with flying colors. And uh, we're talking about level two. Is it's nice and easy. But it's still uh, level two first course. This one is a bookkeeping transaction. The syllabus is uh, comparatively uh, bigger, uh, not very smaller. It's it's uh, slightly bigger. Uh, this is my online school accounting lecture. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, through this one, even before pandemic, I have been helping many students with my YouTube channel. You might have come across already, level two, level three, level four, university. Uh, I was a teacher of. ACCA in you know, a gold status college and later on platinum status college both in uh, United Kingdom London East London and central London not northeast North London and uh, at this moment I'm also working with KBM training and recruitment which is a uh, 80 and also ACCA gold but uh, the AAT mostly for AAT I was the head of department of uh, a sixth form college in North London is a uh, unique sixth form uh, West Teachers. over there. I was a head of accounting. So you are under safe hands. You're definitely going to enjoy the lecture. Yep. And uh, this lecture is going to be interactive both way. Like, it's not like I will be doing all the work. I will give you some time to do work as well. Uh, through the screen sharing, those of you who didn't print it out, don't worry, I'll give you enough time to take a screenshot. Uh, you can take a picture from your mobile and then work out on your notebook. <clears throat> Little bit regarding the online lectures, because it's online, there are some goods and bad side of it, pros and cons we collect. Um, the good sides are, uh, you are not traveling to my college, my school, you are sitting back at home and enjoy your tea and coffee and relaxed. Uh, enjoy the same standard lecture, yeah? And uh, of course, lecture notes will be provided, is been provided already. The, this recorded video will be provided um, through any on, of our platform. And uh, uh, this is the good side, I said. But the, the, the downside could be at any time. It never happened though, <laughs> but it can happen. Like uh, it's disruption or... If it is more than five minutes, if my screen is blackout or anything, you can email me uh, the same email you received my responses and the course material. Right, yeah. Okay, that is the introductory talky talky. Now I'm going into core into the uh, lectures. I'll be starting with, this is approximately two, two hours plus lecture. So I hope you do have that enough time with you. Yeah, lovely, good. Uh, thanks for the head shaking, Janice and Jane, <laughs> lovely, and, uh, and other students as well. So just showing the breakdown of this lecture. Uh, now onwards, five to 10 minutes exam tips. Exam tips. Uh, I would love to hear some more from you people, but uh, uh, it's better to go straight into the action. Yeah, exam tips first, then I'm going to start the mock exam. Hmm? Mock, mock one, the one I sent you. In this mock, we will have plenty of practice with revision. Yeah, revision and practice, revision and practice. And that is going to be our uh, 10 minutes maximum, the first one, and rest uh, one and a half hour, 1.5 hours. We are going to practice mock one. And, and that is it, yeah. I don't think we need any break. Uh, if I feel anything uh, in between, 
I will give you some five, 10 minutes break if we need anything. Normally, if it is a three hours lecture, I do give half an hour break, yeah? And uh, I do have three hours lectures. You know why I could afford, I mean, I could found out this time today, Saturdays and Sundays, I'm really busy, but uh, once in a month, or after every five weeks, I do get one weekend free. And I try to keep that one, uh, that free week, like free from my college, <laughs> my time, available time is free. I try to utilize for you people like Facebook and YouTube students, like you people are really knowledge seeking people. I really appreciate, like you found out, you came across through Facebook, web, or YouTube or online and uh, looking for, seeking for knowledge, thumbs up to you people. And definitely many of you are mom and dad and working in uh, different uh, full-time working and still studying. That's really amazing. Absolutely hats off to you people. Um, that enthusiasm you need to show me in this lecture as well. Yeah, like we are always motivated people, never demotivated. Uh, even some some of you may, may have mentioned me that Elias, I uh, first attempt, I couldn't do a second attempt. Don't worry, these are professional studies. Yeah, nobody gonna count your attempts. When you pass, you succeeded, right? And we are here to not just pass, 90%. Uh, yeah, married distinction. You're gonna get distinction. Yeah, you don't trust me. I will. I will show you. Yeah, how you're gonna get uh, a ninety percent? Okay. Uh, so let's get going with the <clears throat> exam tips. Basically, I'm using BPP book. You might have been using different uh, 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 publisher book. That's no problem. Similar, same uh, syllabus we're going to cover. Uh, there are Kaplan, Osborne, and uh, some of you are from premier training or first intuition or local colleges. Uh, so you might have different, uh, your own um, course materials, but you are going to cover these chapters, yeah? All these chapters. So from these chapters, what are you going to expect in the, in the exam? Your exam is one hour, 50, one and a half hour, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, right? Exam tips. We started already. It's a computer-based exam, computer-marked exam, so you get results instantly. How many tasks you need to do? 10. How many? 10 tasks you need to do. You know, because this is AT level 2, and uh, many of you might just going to, uh, this is going to be your first exam. Who, who's ex who is doing the first time uh, AT exam? First time AT exam. You never had, uh, have done your exam before. Is there anybody? Like uh, maybe some of you already have done some of the exams. Okay, so I believe some of all of you have done some, at least some exams. So you should know it's seventy percent. Is there anybody who is just doing the first time AT ever your life in your life? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, lovely, no problem. I am. Karina is there. All right. Okay, Marina is there as well. Oh, there's so na na na. Yeah, Karina, Marina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, who else is uh, Jane? Janice is there. Uh, nice name, people. Uh, 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 Zach is there. Alexandra is there. Okay, so uh, all of you are uh, welcome again. I'm officially welcoming you. And those of you are doing first time, 70% is the pass rate. Plus a pass. You need to get 70% to pass your assessment, yeah? Uh, to be honest, this is uh, uh, really high. In university, tell me what is the pa pass percentage? I, I think most of you know it, whether even A-levels or university, this is 40% only, 40% you pass. Uh, if you ask me, Elias, in chartered, chartered accountancy, like ACCA, CMA, CA, EW, what is the pass percentage? I mean, wh what percentage you need to pass your exams? 50%. How about 80? 70%. Yes, 70%. And uh, that is the reason AT is um, maintaining its highest standard uh, in the market. And also uh, being an AT qualified accountant, like once you qualify level three and four, even after qualifying level two, do you know you can get a, a bookkeeping certificate? This unit and another unit, you can get a bookkeeping certificate. Then in level three, you can get another certificate. After qualifying level four, you can become MAAT, FMAAT, yeah, fellow member or member of AAT. That is the reason it is highly uh, valued. 70% toward the level two, three, and four. Now, I'm not going deep detail how many modules are there, level two, three, four. Uh, we don't need it. We're going to focus in here. Then task. Uh, I will be progressing with the course lecture material throughout this 10 task. Just generally letting you know, if you have 90 minutes, 
90 minutes and you have 10 tasks. So you have how many minutes each task? Nine minute almost, yeah? That's number one, you should have a wristwatch. Makes sense, you should have a wristwatch uh, when you do the exam. Or uh, many exam centers, there are already wall clock uh, hanged in front of you or left or right, that should be there. Another exam tip, the computer you're sitting, you should know that computer. All the buttons in the um, keyboard should be good and working condition. It is good to have two screen, but not mandatory for synoptic needed, but not for this type of module. Uh, one, uh, one screen is good, good to go. You must take your calculator, the calculator you trust, not the calculator you just bought in the morning and just sit, sit in the exam. <laughs> Don't do that, yeah? Because there are so many things, could be maybe percentage, maybe anything, you know, root over something like that, uh, the calculator you've been using over the months. Uh, you must ask from your ex invigilator, the guy, uh, lady who is going to invigilate you, ask for extra paper, where you're gonna do a little bit of working, okay? You must take some good pen and a little bit of working. This is during the exam. Oh, that's so nice, Janice, yeah? <laughs> from the school <laughs> calculator. Okay, so th this, this is the during the exam. And you have uh, 90 minutes, I would say, 10 tasks, is, you can fairly do it. If these are going to be nice and good, you can fairly do these 10 tasks within these uh, uh, 90 minutes. Before exam, by, like night before exam, you should take good rest, good sleep, eat well in the morning, do the exam, boom, boom, and pass your exams. But to pass your exams, you need to work at least one week before exam, yeah? Of course, good food needed. Many students I saw in my teaching career, they don't take breakfast and they go to the uh, exam center. They say, oh, dreasy. And it's like, I might have got COVID. <laughs> it's not COVID. You didn't have the breakfast, you know? <laughs> so do your breakfast. Reach there half an hour before. And that's it. Yeah. How about the, the, the most important thing? How do you prepare yourself for your final exam? <clears throat> for this module, I would, I would suggest you, this is very important, you must, uh, uh, okay, let me tell you, this video is recorded. It might be uploaded one of our platforms where you can access it easily, okay? So you can see your uh, this uh, recorded video and can get benefited. What about course note or course book you are doing it? You must do all the questions. Any, I, I will send you the videos, don't worry, yeah? I will send you the links of the videos, of course, yeah. That's I mentioned, I, I normally do. Um, you, because many of you might have started accounting for the first time, you need, might need mentored help, which many of you are doing in college or any other institution. Ask questions to your teacher, yeah? Don't be shy, ask question. If you might feel it silly, ask it to your teacher. Like you don't know what is an invoice, ask him or her. Don't worry, you are here to learn. Here means to your college mostly, wherever you are getting most help. Of course, today you are welcome to ask even silly or any other question. Number one, you must complete your book. Okay, core exam uh, preparation book, textbook, number one, textbook. Textbook, you must finish it. All the questions and test your understanding if you want to get 90% or pass. And number two, question bank or pack, uh, exam kit, we call it. In BPP, we call it question bank or workbook. Don't ignore these things. Workbook or question bug or exam kit, question bank. Okay, handwriting is slightly not good. My mom and dad wanted to make me a uh, doctor, yeah? but uh, eventually I become an accountant. So <laughs> my handwriting looks like a little bit of doctor. Yeah. Doctors, because you know, because of doctors' bad handwriting, people die. Yeah. Like they, they write something and the, the, the pharmacist gives something else. Um, you take the medicine and you're gone. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyway, so number number four, number three, which we are doing today is mock. Mock is important. Minimum three mocks you need to do. Yeah, two you can do from your uh, my AAT website. Are you exploring your my AAT? You must. Yeah. From your, you know, if you're registered with AAT, you've got a login password. Uh, from your learning portal, you can get into your my AAT. There are mock exams. There are two already. I have given you one, and you know your question in your course provider. You might have more. So minimum three 
mock exams. Hmm? At least one or two mock exams under time condition, like you set with 98 minutes and without any help, you've been doing, doing, doing. If you are getting 80% and above, green signal from my side, do your final exam and pass it. Uh, mock exam number four, do you know about something called green light test? Have you ever heard of it? Green test. That, that is also in your my AT, yeah? My AAT. These are free. I'm talking about the mock exam green light test. These are free available from AAT. Utilize it. Uh, small, small questions. Do those things. If you are ready, then and go and do the exam. Pass it. Let me know, Ilias. I passed with 90%, 80%, or at least whatever, 70%. Move on to the next module. Okay. All right. That's all the talky talky people. Now we are going to go over all these 12 chapters, every bit of this, like, um, uh, yeah, all these 12 chapters. And when I'm going to go into the uh, mock, I'm going to put the video down. We don't want any disruption, distraction. Uh, it is down and it, it gives me a little space to work out. So I'm putting your videos off right now. And uh, everybody's uh, video is uh, going to be put off now for the time being. And uh, if we need it, we can put, put you on back here. Yeah? Okay. Uh, videos are down. <clears throat> Whenever needed, I will put it on. And... Uh, uh, I hope the voice is still good and screen sharing is good. Little more confirmation. Can you see my screen sharing and writing? And is my voice good? I'm writing here, written a star. You people are A star. Can you please give me the confirmation? Is my voice good? Yes, Karina. Thank you. And how I hope it, it is an yes from everybody. Okay. Uh, I checked the enthusiasm meter before I started. We are going to start the uh, module. Just before that, did, have you ever came across of this one? Like uh, I have a free uh, course, learn accounting within an hour. Have you done it ever? No. <laughs> learn accounting within an hour. I highly recommended. Just do it. Learn your basics of debit, credit, accounting equation, how to do balance CDBD, you know, how to do trial balance. Uh, that will definitely give you a lot of confidence. Like it's a free enrollment, double entry to financial statements, even income statement balance sheet. What you're gonna learn here is accounting equation, how to remember debit credit, T accounts, ledger accounts, trial balance. All this we're going to do today anyway. But if you would have watched, these are very nicely structured. Uh, there are some uh, questions and course materials are there, absolutely free, you must do it. Also, Another free resource from my side is this playlist, AT Level 2 tutorials from my YouTube channel. There are 20 good videos, highly recommended for you. Lovely. <clears throat> Checking the enthusiasm meter from the students before I start the core lecture. One question and I'm expecting answer from you. Are you ready to start? Can you please write me something, please? I will put it, Janice. Marina says, yes, more yes I need. Are you ready to start? Write me, please. Alexandra, yes. Karina, yes. Janice, yes. Zakia, yes. <clears throat> I hope everybody is ready. And so does me. Let's get started. Rock and roll. AT Level 2 Foundation Certificate. Uh, bookkeeping transaction 1920-21. It is still valid until this. So <clears throat> we're going to do task number one. What you are going to expect in task number one? In task number one, you can expect business documents, books of prime entry, and VAT regarding credit sales and VAT on, and discounts as well. Hmm. Let's get going one by one questions, and we will develop our knowledge regarding VAT, books of prime entry, or anything else, whatever comes across in our path. Little more, uh, 10 tasks, 130 minutes uh, regarding comma, you know, 10,000, you can write like this, or you can put a comma, whether 10,000 or 100,000, like if you meant to write 100, you can put a comma, that is also right. You, if you don't want to put a comma, that is also right. Decimal places is like this decimal. Have a look here, decimal, like 10.56, you need to put a point. And uh, if, if there's a VAT, 
UK VAT is 20%. These are the things we should have mentioned. We forgot, but we mentioned it now. Task number one, making it slightly bigger. Most of the answers I'm going to expect from you, but uh, we will do together. <clears throat> Let's read it. It is good to look the requirement at a glance. So have a look. I can see some code given, supply name given. I skip this bit, little mm -hmm. bit. I will read it. I will not skip, but showing you how you're going to do in your exam. So you can see a purchase day book and bit of gaps. Here is a gap, 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 gap. So in your head, straight here, you need to think this gap needs to be field, number one. Number two, purchase return day book we have. And I can see a bit gap here, gap, gap, gap. Ooh, gap, gap. We need to fill the gaps. So stay tuned, we will fill it. Uh, pick list will always be given. It's a computer based. So you click it, uh, you click here, you get options or you put entry from your keyboard. So that is your task one. Now let's read the question. My first recommendation to you, read the requirement first. So we, we saw the requirement, like the fill in the blanks here, right? And uh, <clears throat> let's get going then. Day books, books of prime entry, they said it. Eh? So we do have some books of prime entry. What are the books of prime entry at first? Books of prime entry is initial day book where you record your transaction. It could be sales day book, purchase day book, sales return, purchase return, cash book, petty cash book, discount allowed and discount received day book. Reading the question for you and then expecting answers from you. Purchase invoices and purchase credit note. Credit note is used for what? Tell me. Credit note is used for purchase return. Thank you, Marina. Okay, I haven't received and partially entered into the sales day book shown below. Complete the entries in the purchase day book and purchase return day book. So anything credit note, purchase return day book. Do remember in a purchase day book, you record credit purchases only. Yeah, purchase day book, credit purchases only. Selecting the correct supplier accounting code. So account code is going to be your answer first and inserting appropriate figure to complete benches. Only two requirement people. Number one, code, get the correct code. Number two, insert appropriate figure in the fill in the blanks. So here is the coding list given for supply name like C broad uh, PLC BR02 and likewise MTED uh, TA06 and like J Yoke, all the items are given. So let's go get into the question first. Purchase day book, day details, supply account code, invoice number, total, uh, VAT net product and product uh, even given. These are all column, yeah? These are all column. And the row date in the date, you write 31st, last date mostly written for the um, purchase day book, but it can take place any day. Don't worry. For this time, we're taking the last day. Details. So you, you, uh, you means business, your business. When I say you, you means it's your business. Your business okay one more quick uh, quick code thing i'd like to share with you business entity concept then i would like to answer this question business entity or separate entity concept we call it separate entity concept people please do remember your business is separate from the owner what did i say your business is separate from the owner what do you mean by that? Let's, for example, you run a company, ABC Traders, ABC Traders. Now, you are, uh, you are selling anything, maybe pizza, chicken and chips, let's say you anything over the counter. Whenever you're selling it, sales and earn 500 money, is that your money or business money? Business money, yeah? That is business money. So you call it sales. Then again, you purchase. Let's assume you're the owner and you're purchasing. Purchase. You bought some items worth of 300 pounds. You can't, you cannot say it's like owner's purchase. No, it's business's purchase. Bought an asset like fridge, refrigerator, uh, oven, or anything non-current asset. Uh, yeah, uh, a cash deal could be worth of 1,000 pounds. Is that owner's asset? Answer is no. The asset belongs to business. So you always think from whose point of view? Business point of view. Am I understood here? Business point of view. Business is getting money. Business is losing money. For example, owner given thousand uh, pound into the business. What do you call it? Owner. Owner gave thousand pound into business. What do you call it? 
come on. Yes, thank you, Capital. Thank you, uh, Marina, Karina, and other students. Thank you, Capital. So capital from whose point of view? Business point of view, isn't he? What is happening with the business? Business is getting money in the in the in the uh, in, in their account, maybe bank or cash, no matter. We call it capital. Yeah. So you always think from business point of view. That is the meaning of separate entity concept or business entity concept. You think your business is separate from the owners. Lovely and good. Uh, we might need to use that separate entity concept at, at different stages, but not for now. Now you need to get a supplier code. Mars and supplies. What is the code? Give me first answer and get your first mark. Mars and supplies. What is the code? Come on. Write me. Write me. Mars and supplies. M A 02 is right answer. And you know, that's your first mark. And likewise, same way you are going to, thank you, Marin and Janice. Everybody should participate here. Yeah? Even if the question is silly, uh, do participate. How if people get 100 out of 100? People get 100 out of 100 in this paper. Do you know that? How? This is the way, because the questions are easy. Okay, second question. What is the J York Limited's accounts uh, supplier code? I just need to open my eyes and where is J York? Here is J York. And what is the code number? This is the code number, Y O zero one. Yep, and third one, P Cutler Transport Limited. What is their code number? P Cutler Transport Limited, C U zero three. You got one to three marks into your pocket. You might get a little relief. Oh, easy, nice, good marks. Let's go to, into the slightly deeper things now. Now you see there is a gap here in the total. There's a gap here in the net. And uh, I will talk about this product 800 and 900 and 800 in a minute, but let's do this, the first one. You know, Mars supply, you don't know how much is the total purchases from him or how much is the net purchase for him, but you only know V80, 80. Uh, have a look here. There is a way of doing it. What is the UK V80? What percentage? 20%, yeah, let me do it here. What percentage is the UK VAT? Uh, net plus VAT equals to gross. Okay, I'll give you an example. Let's assume net we bought worth of 100 pound. If you add 20% on a VAT is 20 and your gross is 120. I hope everybody is okay with this simple um, um, example. I'm just uh, making an example from my side. Net, net purchase from Mr. ABC, whosoever, you bought worth of 100 pound. And 20 pound VAT you've been charged, altogether you gave 120 by check. Can you please give me a double entry? I'm checking your double entry knowledge now. 120 paid by check for purchases. What is the double entry? Who writes me? What is debit? What is credit? Mm-hmm. Taking a little time. Yes, of course, definitely. Purchases ever, ever, ever. Debit. Purchase debit. Purchase debit. Bank credit. Okay, bank credit. Lovely. Now I'm changing that bank to cash. Yeah. Cash. So that would be everybody is correct. Purchase debit, bank credit. Now, now putting into the cash. Purchase debit, cash credit. Purchase debit because purchase is an expense and cash credit means cash is a current asset going down. That's the reason. You might might have came across the P E A R L S pearls or dead click. D E A D C L I C dead click. That's gonna help you to learn your double entry. Uh, those this that is anyway given here. How to remember debit credit in my T accounts and also learn accounting within an hour uh, in this. In this video, there is a pearls and dead clicks given. You can check it out later on. Now, you know, that is the double entry. That was just uh, another, yeah, dealer. You can use dealer as well, uh, definitely. Um, now hear about, because so many things we need to discuss at the first question. Um, that was the double entry part I checked and my job is done. I can erase it. That is gone. Second, second knowledge I'm going to check is your VT knowledge. Yeah. 
uh, if there is any uh, lackings, I will uh, develop your knowledge, don't worry. VAT, do you agree with me? VAT is a liar, B, litty. You have to give it to the HMRC. But uh, you must have done a VATT account or you're going to do it even greater in next module, uh, bookkeeping controls, so VAT. VATT account is a credit account. Hmm? Is a credit account, like any income related VAT, income means, for example, sales related VAT, any amount you write on the credit side because you're liable to HMRC. But any purchase related VAT or expense related VAT is what? Any expense related VAT you can claim, claim back from HMRC, for example, purchase. So do you see purchase VAT is a debit into the VAT account? Purchase VAT into the VAT account. I repeat, into the VAT account, not the purchase account. Purchase related VAT, for example, that 20 pound, you can claim back from HMRC. That is why we write on the debit side. And sales related VAT, maybe let's say 30 pound sales related VAT, you, you have collected from customers, but that should go to the HMRC. VAT belongs to HMRC, yeah? Okay, so not making it that much deep because students don't like VAT that much. That's why we do have in level three, a complete uh, module on VAT, which you call it indirect tax. Just let's go over the VAT calculation. VAT is 20%. If it is said uh, 100 plus VAT, you just do 20% on it, right? That is called exclusive. That is called? Here you need to put attention. There is not much, but here you need to put attention. Plus VAT means you need to add VAT. Makes sense? 100 plus 20%, 120 is your total figure. Yeah, so 100 was exclusive. You added, you plus the VAT, you get VAT inclusive. VAT inclusive. Now from inclusive, how do you take out the VAT? This 120 is inclusive. VAT inclusive now. How do you get the VAT? Do you do 20% on it? No. What is the easy method? Tell me. 120 is VAT inclusive. How much is the VAT? How do you do it? How, what is the way you have learned? Come on. Have you not learned divided by six? Yeah, good. Yeah, 1.2. Uh, I'll show you both. Yeah, the easiest way you can remember if it is inclusive, any figure, any VAT figure inclusive divided by six. Let me take my digital calculator on screen. Yeah. First question is getting a little lengthy and so many topics we are discussing. Uh, uh, next questions, we don't need that much. Yeah. So if 100, 120 divided by six, what do you get? 20, do you see it? 20 is your VAT and rest of the 100 is your net amount. Yeah. Or isn't it, I'm going little bottom somewhere, wherever I get or up maybe, wherever I get some space, I would like to write. Or 120, you can divide 120, divided by 120 times by 20, you get your VAT. Divided by 120 times by 20, you get your VAT. That is another way of doing it. So people, I'm going to use one of these formulas here in this box. Have a look here, this, this VAT, 80 pound. So if you follow my net plus VAT equals to gross, that formula, just follow here one more time. Net plus VAT equals to gross. Now VAT given 80 pound, and the percentage is 20%, net is 100%, and gross is 120%. Can you not find the net and gross? Total means gross, yeah? Answer is yes. How do you do it? Please follow me first one, the rest you can do of your. 80 represent 20%, 80 divided by 20. If I times by 100, I should get my net figure. I repeat, 80 divided by 20, times by 100, I should get this figure net, which gave me 400, sorry, net, uh, yeah, net, 400. 
And 400 plus 80, which is going to give me 480. That is my gross or we call it total as well. Gross or total. So here is my net 400. Where is 400 plus 80? It's 480. Easy peasy. Yeah. Nice and good. Okay. Another way of getting it, I got, I'm erasing these things. I got the net. I could have get the gross the similar way. How? Because I'm look. my gross is 120%. So if 80 represent 20%, 80 divided by 20 times by 120, I should get my gross. Is it making sense? 80, which represents 20% divided by 20 times by 120. I got 480. Do you see it? 480, which is like this. Yep. This is the way of doing it. Slightly longer, but that's, that's the logical way. Okay, now, 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 I'm giving you, ah, next one is going to be easy. Can you please give me the answer for uh, J York Limited? What should be the VAT? You have a net now. You don't need to go all the way that net plus VAT, yeah? Marina says 180, waiting for more people's answer. Karen as well, more people, please. Yeah, if it's net given, that means VAT exclusive. Thank you, Zakia. Everybody says 180. You just do 20%. Thank you, Janice. 20%. 180. 180 is the right answer. Oh my gosh, hold on. Sometimes my pen like doesn't speak my language. 180 is right uh, uh, answer. So 180 and 900, that gives you 1080. People, uh, before I do the last one, let me tell you. Yeah. Total minus net, thank you. <laughs> That's another way of doing it. <laughs> you know, gross minus net, you can VAT, you get the V80. 1080 minus 900 is still 180. Or 90, 900 times by 20%, that is also 180. Either way you do it. Now, people, you know, what is this product 900 and 800? It's just a code. Product 800 and 900 is just a code. Yeah. You All you need to remember here, this is figure. This is net figure. This is what figure? Net, this 400. Again, this 900 is net. And you see, it goes here in the net. You see, it, it is net. That's all you need to remember in extended columns. After net, like product A, product B, uh, any category, uh, what is this? This is net, this is net, okay? So if I ask you in, in last ones for P Cutler, this 640 and 150, both of these adds up to what? Net. Isn't he? Net. So can you please give me the net figure? Although there is another way of doing it from here, but uh, nine, 790, is it? Let's try to do it. 640 plus 150. Oh yeah, 790. That is my net. Makes sense? So this is the way you can get net or uh, another way you can do, you know, net plus VAT equals to gross. So here about your gross is given. Another way, a little long way I'm showing you. How much is the gross given? 948, right? I'm, I'm going to write it down. Just give me a minute here. Yeah? 948, uh, changing the color of my pen. 948, that represents 120%, isn't it? 948 divided, divided by 120, 120 times by 100 if I do, I should get my net. Let's try it. That's another way of doing it. 948 divided by 120 times by 100. Oh, yeah, I do get nine, nine, uh, 790. And that's right, yeah? How much would be the VAT? You can get the difference between these two, minus 948. I'm doing a little uh, 158, yeah? 158. What do you mean by that, Janice? 1%? Hmm? Okay, 158. Another way of you can double check. One, how do you get 150? 790, if you do 20%, does it give it to 150? It does. That means your works are absolutely correct. We're going to check the answers in a minute and you people are doing good work. Let's uh, finish the purchase return day book, then uh, check our answer. What is the supplier code for C broad PLC? Let's check it out from the top. C broad, C, 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 where are you? Oh, at the top, BR02. Do you agree with me?
948, <laughs> okay, Janice, I'm showing you again. 948, 948 divided by 120 times by, it gives you 7.9, yeah? Times by 100, you get 790. If you do times by the 20, you get the VAT, yeah? I hope it makes sense oh, and hope it helps, yeah? Okay, moving on. Uh, what is the code we got here? BR02. So we are going to put a BR02. Uh, that's done. And uh, next one is, sorry, hold on. Uh, J York. I think J York is this one. Y O Y zero Y O zero one. Right? Is my coding correct? Answer should be yes. Okay. Tell me the net of this purchase return. What would be the net, everybody? I, I just taught you a little earlier. What would be the net here? Yes. Thank you, Marina and Karin and Zakia and Alexandra. Thank you, Janice. That's a good one. 25 plus this two. Yeah, 150. Can you please quickly give me the VAT now on this? 150, 30. Marina says 30, 150 times the 20%. It is 30. So 30 plus 150, 180. I, I, I normally, I don't do, thank you everybody. Those of you are participating, I really appreciate. Um, I, no, I normally don't do mental maths. I discourage my students, but yeah, 50. 50 plus 30 is 180, you can do it, yeah? 180, boom, oh, oh, we've got one, two, three, four marks already in your pocket. How about, can you please find the net here? <laughs> I think you can find it easily, yeah? 100 plus 70, 170, right? 170, and 170 plus um, 34, uh, 204 it is going to be. Oh. Uh, or you can do the percentage or you can anything, 204. Yeah, happy with that, nice and good. Yep, another long way you could have done it, this 34 divided by uh, 20 times by 100, you get you still get 170. So many things you really have learned in this question number one. Question number one, I had to show a little complicated way, little long and deep way, now we're going to check the answers. Okay, this is the solution paper here. And these are absolutely correct. How about this 480 was right, 480, then 180 should be right. Then the 790 was right, along with 158, well done. And this is also right, 180 and 30, you got it, even this one. And this two, we got it along, along with this. Boom, 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 well done, congratulations. You have done your first question, although we have taken a little extra time, but don't worry, later questions we can do better and more quickly. Moving on. Business documentation. Again, question number two. Again, business documentation like invoice, credit note, and all these things you can expect. And the books of primate, it could be even a V8, it could be, it could be purchase or sales related, anything. Similar type of questions, but let's see what it is actually. Yep. Really, uh, I can see some sales ledger they're talking about in A, it's some general ledger in B. And that's all I would say. Hmm. Okay, let's read it and do it. The following transactions all took place on 31st December 2020, maybe 2020, and have been entered in the sales daybook, people. Sales daybook, you record credit, sales only, yeah? As shown below, no entries have been made into the ledger system. Ledger means T accounts, yeah? Ledger means T accounts. There are three types of ledger sales ledger, purchase ledger, and general ledger. So sales ledger and purchase the individual ledger. Let's move on first. Yeah, it's a day book, day detail, invoice number, total, and VAT net given. People, this net, have a look, 12,660 is your basically goes into the, which account? Sales account, yeah? This is basically your sales. That's your money. Your means company's money. And this VAT you have collected, this 2532, it goes into the VATT account. Yeah, VATT account. And this one, 15,192, you have collected sales money as well as VT money from whom? From your customer. Customer. Let's say you, whose account is this? Um, no, no business name given. Let's say you miss our business. In our business, who is customer? Timons and company. Percy uh, is our customer. JJ is our customer. LT Fields. These are our customer we are good, selling goods on credit to them let's talk about timons we sold 
4470 worth of money at first and then we collected 894 VAT ultimately we, co we collected or we are going to collect customers means we are going to collect yeah 5364 you know 4476 is our money and now 894 is HMRC money yeah that's number one thing you need to keep it in your head so these are our customer credit customer and yes Janice you're all right credit customers are your re receivables SLCA sales ledger control account but individually we call them SL sales ledger and whenever we put them into one control account we call them SLCA SLCA so this is SLCA 15,192 because it's all collected together it's SLCA who tells me SLCA is a debit or credit? Tell me. SLCA, is that a debit or credit and why? SLCA, debit account or credit account. Fantastic. Everybody says debit. No, don't. Uh, if you do mistake in the lesson, don't be, uh, don't feel shy. Doing mistake in the lesson is absolutely correct and fine. But doing mistake in the real exam is a big shame. Yeah. Uh, doing mistake in the uh, uh, lesson is not a shame at all. If you if you have said this is SLCA is a debit account, yes, because it's the current asset. Okay, if I ask you sales account, is that a debit or credit account? Sales account. Thank you, Marina, Alexandra. Mm, this is credit and Janice. Uh, this is credit. Why? Because this is an income. Yeah. Now my next question: VAT on sales. This 2532 VAT we have collected on behalf, uh, on behalf of HMRC from a customer. So is that a debit or credit item? Write me. Sales related VAT. Sales related VAT. Income VAT. Let's try to find out. Uh, Alex okay, Alexandra has written me. Into, I, I have drawn it somewhere, but I'm uh, okay. Income VAT. Uh, where? Income, please do remember, income VAT, you are liable to give it to back to HMRC. So credit, income VAT is credit. Self-related VAT is, you're liable. This 2532, is that your money? No, it's HMRC money. You should collect it whenever is your credit term finishes and give it to HMRC. Make sense? Expense-related VAT, you can claim back from HMRC because you have already paid it. Purchase-related VAT, that is going to be debit. Anyway, question here what will be the entries in the sales ledger did they tell you slca or sales ledger sales ledger means individual 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 means into the timmons percy jj and lt fields account at first write down their name timmons i'm just writing the initial percy jj and lt you got one two one 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 four marks amount write and copy the amounts from here and keep getting your easy marks that is the way people get more than 90 percent in this particular paper it's most of these is copy paste four two two four and then this one uh, three one nine two and this one two four one two what is this in your accounts these are your customers credit customers they will pay you this much of amount of money and we call it SL. Let me draw an SL account, sales ledger, sales ledger account, whether SL or even SLCA, sales ledger control account. And the mm, performer looks like saying, the first thing first you write you balance BD, means how much your customers owe you, any amount. Then credit sales. But because this is SL, we write it uh, invoice, yeah? Invoice. Invoice means how much we sold to them. Only two items, number one and number two. These two items you write on the debit side. Every other items you write on the credit side. Three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Let me show you. Like they paid you through bank. Yeah, you write on the credit side. What would be the sales ledger um, in in VD? What do you mean by Jen? Is that would would the oh would the sales ledger uh, including v yes? Thank you, including VAT. Yeah. That should be including VAT. Good question. I understood now. Okay. Um, bank. Bank means whenever they pay money, your receivables goes down. Then sales return. You write on the credit side. Then discount allowed. DISC allowed. You write on the credit side. Contra. You write on the credit side. 
irrecoverable debt, not in level two though, recoverable debt. You're in the credit sector. This is a pro forma. This is just a pro forma. Then you do balance CDBD. Ultimately, you will find balance CDBD on the credit side and balance BD on the debit side at the end. Now you tell me, these are your credit sales. This is credit sales, credit sales, credit sales, credit sales. Which side of your SL account we have written this credit side? Did you write on the debit side or credit side? Yes, we have written on the debit side. That is the answer, okay? Debit is the answer. That's how you get the full answer. Make sense? Yeah. Now I do have my, uh, some good videos on SL and SLC from my uh, uh, YouTube channel, which is absolutely free. Have a look here, especially for SLCA and PLCA. Mm, okay, I just refreshed that one. Uh, in the in the in over there, you can check it out later on uh, in the um, playlist. I will give you the links. Don't worry. Okay. Now, next question, next question. What will be the entries in general ledger? People, general ledger, apart from SL and PL, everything is GL. Wow, what a rhyme. Apart from SL and PL, everything is GL. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what is SL? SL means sales ledger, PL, PL means purchase ledger. What is GL? GL means general ledger. GL means general ledger. Hundreds of example I can give you, like say, like apart from sales and uh, ledger and purchase ledger, what are the T accounts? You can give me hundreds of examples, rent account, rates account, electricity, uh, sales account, purchase account, sales return, purchase return, capital account, drawings account. Everything is your general ledger, even SLCA, PLCA, make sense? Even SLCA, VAT and all, everything. Now, tell me, like, right, the, they given you option sales, sales ledger control and VAT. Okay, let's just start with sales. VAT, anything you could have started, and SLCA. You should know from your pearls, debt click, or dealer, whatever it is. Let's do the debit credit first. Sales, debit or credit account. Tell me. Sales. Everybody should agree with me. It is credit. Yeah. Let's put the value figure now. How much this is. Can you see? I'm taking another color pen here. I already done a sales account. It is credit. How much is the amount? 12660. Okay, that is the amount you need to check. Take 12660. And you're getting one, two, three marks into your pocket. You must be happy with that. My next question I already gave you that answer, but I'm asking you that question. VAT related to sales. Is that a debit or credit item? VAT related to, yes, it is credit. Thank you, which is 2532. Yeah. VAT related to sales is also credit, which is. Um, Two five three two. I said, yeah. I'll check. Double check. Two five three two. SLCA. SLCA. It is a yes because it's a current asset because it's a trade receivables are your current asset. assets are debit. And how much is the figure? Let's check it out. Fifteen one nine two. Boom. Full marks are there. Have a look. Let's check it out. Uh, next question. Answers. I'm checking. All of a debit because SL is a debit account. When we draw an SL um, for Timson, individually you need to do, do you know that? Percy, uh, JJ, uh, LT, every bit of it is debit here. Yeah, invoice, you write invoice, five, three, six, four, and four, two, two, four, invoice, and likewise, and likewise. That's the reason of being a debit. And sales account is credit. You open a sales account, and put it on the credit side, 660 SDB. It comes from sales day book. Hmm? And um, VAT accounts related to sales, you write sales, or sales day book, no problem. It's a 253. Two. So these are getting credit. And SLC, whenever you do SLC, the sales or sales day book, wherever you're taking it from, you still get same answer or marks, full marks. But it depends what option is uh, given to you, which was either sales day book or sales going to get the right answer. That's our task number two. Let's move on to task number three. And again, bit of primary, bit of the VAT, could be uh, uh, purchase related items. Let's see what it is indeed. Okay. There are three payments to be recorded on the credit side of cash book. Okay, cash book came up already, but mostly cash book comes up here. Uh, next question, yeah, maintaining the cash book. But don't worry, anything um, can be slightly here and there. So cash purchase, 
uh, supplier name is New Time PLC. Our cash money going down by five, four, five, six because we paid. We means a business, Majestics. Majestics is us. Let's assume us. We are Majestics. Uh, our business name is Majestics, and uh, we paid to one of the suppliers called New Time PLC. We paid four fifty six, but of that seventy six for VAT and three eighty four net. 76 you can reclaim from HMRC, yeah? Reclaim from HMRC, number one. Number two, trade payable listings and credit supplies paid by check. Proud and sunlight being paid by check. So your bank going down, please do remember. So cash down, bank down. What you meant to do is enter the details from the check and da, 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 da. In short, you need to do this T accounts or credit side of your cash book. Again, means credit side. Credit side means money out. Cash book credit side means money out i'm changing my color of pen now balance bf already given into the bank two seven hundred who tells me what is this what is this two seven hundred uh, i'm giving you option is that a positive money or negative money is that available money overdraft money anything you can write cash book credit side balance bf in the bank two seven hundred yes well done this is an overdrawn you already have an overdrawn but you have three category of payment let's write those three category number one is new new time number two is uh, proud i'm just writing the initial and number three is sunlight um new time limited we have paid them total of this much amount four five six so cash going down by four five six but there is a vat 76 and cash purchase is 380 people that's how you present or record in your cash book credit side. So our new time is done. And then a couple of more, 701, your bank going down. Right at first into the to here, total bank 701. Uh, one question, if I get receipt from supplier who is not VT registered business uh, for 275, does that mean uh, net or gross receipt? A supplier who is not VT registered. Now, look, you cannot claim that is gross. Yeah. They didn't charge you any VAT. Okay, Marina. So there is no VAT, nothing to deal with that VAT. Yeah. I hope it satisfies your answer. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You've written the answer anyway. <laughs> if there's no VAT, that's the gross. Yeah. You are not uh, obliged to keep account the VAT accounts. Yeah. Okay because you didn't pay the VAT, the entire amount is your expense. So that is your gross and you don't show any VAT. For example, um, that uh, look at this. This is the example here. For example, supplier proud and sunlight. You're paying by 701 uh, check. So it's straight payable, 701. No VAT, you haven't done any VAT. Yeah, maybe we didn't receive any VAT receipt. Okay, or VAT invoice. It's not receipt, we call it invoice. Sunlight again, how much we paid by bank? Uh, 975. And that's what we write here into the 975. Okay, who gives me the total here? Uh, give me the total for bank and the trade payables. The rest is easy. We can do the rest. Uh, the total for this cash is 456. And total for this VT is 76. What is the total for the bank? Who does it for me? Can someone do it? And this one, 380. Let's do it. Bank. Let's do it. 701. Oh, 2700 at the top. Balance plus 701 plus 975. Okay, thank you, Jenny. So your answer matches with my one. So 4376 is right answer. 4376, right answer. And what is this here? If anybody does it, it saves our time. Yeah. 700 and oh, oh, oh. the first one is 701. It's not four. Yeah. This is 701. So 701 plus 975, 1676, right? 1676. Thank you, Jenny. Now, that is the money out from your bank. This is money out cash, and this is money out bank. And these are individual accounts tell me purchase is that a debit account or credit account if you meant to do a purchase account yeah i know this is a silly question easy question but yeah who writes me debit thank you karina <laughs> yeah purchase debit 
trade payables, trade payables, is that a debit or credit account? Tell me, TP, I'm writing down at the top. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Um, TP, or you can call it PLCA. It is credit account, I do agree. But when you pay them, you paid seven, uh, 1676, Wait, which side it goes in? Is it debit or credit? When you pay to your payables, it becomes, payables is, yeah, well done, thank you people. Um, it is debit, it becomes 1676, becomes debit, yeah? Yeah, it reduces the, the, uh, the owing, that's true. Debt means owing, yeah. It, uh, our liability, sorry. It reduces our debt or liability, yeah, our owing. As great, that means it is going to be into the purchase ledger control account. It is going to be on the debit side. VAT 76, tell me, purchase related VAT is that debit or credit? You can claim it back. In the VAT account, purchase related VAT, debit or credit? Who remembers it? Yes, it is debit. Thank you, people. Thank you, those of you participating. I appreciate it. It is debit. That's correct. Now, I will show you, I will share one trick which many of you don't practice or don't do. Oh, the question is not asked here, maybe later on. Okay, later on we'll do it. Let's see uh, uh, what we meant to do here now. I, I was just going a little extra mile here. The debit side of the cash book, debit side means money in of your cash book. Balance brought forward at the beginning was 360 cash balance. That's good. And a further 170 received in the during the week. That means 360 plus you received 170 more. So on the debit side means total money in. Are you understanding what I'm doing now? 360 you had in your cash book plus 170 you received 530 total cash. Total cash debit. Yeah. That means money in in your till or cash. And how much money out? Would you agree with me? Total money out is cash, 456. Yeah, total money out is 456. How much is left? Cash balance as your cash balance. That is the question. How much is left? 74. Marina says 74. Do you agree with Marina? And so this um, Alexandra, 74. Yes, I agree with you people. You total had 530 minus this. 456 money out so 74 should be left well done next question similar but slightly different it's related to bank next question the debit side of the cash book shows the total amount money banked 2250 that means money in in the bank account how much is money out in your bank account money in 2250 would you agree with me that money out is this figure 4376 so how much you are left with? How much you are left with? It's clearly a negative money. Okay, I'm taking Marina's answer. Minus two, one, two, six. Can anybody, thank you, Janice. Yeah, I was just about to, two, one, two, six. Does anybody have any question here? Any confusion? Any clarification? Alexander, go ahead. Yeah, you can, you can unmute yourself. You can write down um, anything you prefer. Okay, hold on, Time seven, six. Oh yeah, it's two, one, two, six, and seven, six. Which one is the right answer? Two, six. Oh, okay, Alexandra, let me tell you. Alexandra, have a look, uh, highlighting for you. Um, debit side of your cash book, total money is two, two, five, zero. That means they're telling you, you received money, two, two, five, zero. And um, you paid money. This, this, this one, uh, I'm changing the color of my pen for green. This 4376 from your bank total is basically money out. Money out. In your cash book, money, you already paid money uh, from the bank account, money out. And how much money in? In the question, they told you 2250 is money in. Money in 2250, money out 4376. How much is left? Oh, you got it. Well done. You're left with minus. Minus means overdrawn, OD. Yeah. Well done. As long as you get it, that is our success. Okay, moving on. Oh, that's your task three, task four. Task four, they said maintaining the cash book. Let's go over it here. Yeah? It's going to be a very good one, nice one. Uh, you know, uh, that this one, this is really like, now what are we going to do? Little earlier, I have done SLCA, PLCA. 
button, button it here. Now I'm going to do this cash book, yeah? 11, 12 minutes video, you can watch it later on, free. Everything is free, yeah? <laughs> so, and SLC, PLC, yeah, this is the control account, SLC and PLC. You can check out from the, for the last video. This one, cash book, yeah? Money in or out into the cash or bank account. Let's read the question. Majestic's cash book is both, oh, that's the one I was looking for, both book of prime entry and part of double entry. I will talk about this in a minute. Majestic's, um, generally, you know, people, cash book is, cash book and petty cash book is only day book. They are part of uh, double entry as well. But when they tell you, when they mention the one I just highlighted until this, when they tell you, book of prime entry and part of double entry, you don't do any ledger for these two T accounts, cash and bank, cash and bank, yeah? Credit side, yeah, it makes your money down, cash down, bank down, but you don't do this. When they said, okay, I'm going over again. Yeah, this is slightly complicated. Jen is asking me why, uh, explain uh, uh, why. At first, please get it straight. When in the uh, in the requirement, you will you will get this type of question. You will get either they will tell you it's a book of prime entry and double entry. When they tell you, you just take into account the other T accounts, bank charges or other other accounts, cash purchase, uh, payables, and VT account. Not the cash and bank account. Why? because the double entry for cash and bank account is already done that is what why what we assume okay so in these accounts only last four we're going to do okay but if it is only one books of prime entry only then you do cash and bank account as well books of prime entry only we might get that up question we'll do it so here it's a both books of prime entry and double entry system generally your cash book i repeat cash book and petty cash is books of prime entry double entry as well but when they mention this word both books of prime entry and double entry you don't take into account the cash and bank account into the t because it is already done rest of the items for example they already asked you here what will be the four entries in the general ledger four entries will be this okay this yeah so uh we could start with anything like vat account vat account trade payables account cash purchase account and um, bank charges account bank charges account i would like to start from the bottom bank charge is that income expense asset liability what give me that answer first bank charge is that income expense asset liability what is this expense absolutely expenses are debit or credit expenses are debit well done. Yeah, 150. You got your easy marks. Then next one, cash purchase. Purchases are ever, ever, ever debit. Yeah, 1800. You got the second mark. Third one, trade payables. No question is trade payable, debit or credit. You already gave me that answer, credit. But here, what is happening with your trade payable? 10,075. It's a credit side of your cash book. That means your trade payables are going up or down. Is your owing going up or down? Your owing going? Your business liability is going? Right me? Yes, down. That means, is it going to be debit or credit? This 10,075? Yes, it is going to be debit. And you know, this VAT 600, is, it, this VAT relates to cash purchase. Do you agree with me? Let me prove it. You know, your cash purchase was 1,800 times by 20%. If you do, you get six. Ooh, hold on. Mm, it's not fully given, but it is related to generally related to cash purchases. Yeah, eighteen hundred times by twenty percent, three sixty. Okay, not fully given. Maybe something uh, more information are there, or maybe uh, VAT brought down, uh, brought in in here. But it is the credit side. Uh, uh, VAT on the cash book credit side. That means it's an expense related VAT. That's what you need to do. It's not just cash purchase. 360 should be here definitely plus more VAT related. Simple question is this VAT can you claim it back from HMRC or are you liable to pay to HMRC? Cash book credit side VAT tell me. Are you liable or claim back? I got one answer. I, I'm expecting more answer. Marina says claim back. 
expense related VAT or credit side of your cash book, any VAT you can claim back. That is correct answer. So is that a debit account into the VAT or credit? Is this VAT debit or credit? If you can claim back, yes, well done. Thank you, people. Thank you, Janice, uh, Marina. Other people, you can participate as well. Don't uh, worry about getting it wrong. So this is debit. This is definitely debit. Yeah. What is the last uh, question B here? Question B, one of the bank payments to trade payables, Giant Limited. So let's quickly draw a trade payables account, TP, TP or PL, trade payables account. Trade payables is a credit account. So balance BD, you write on the credit side. Then credit purchases, you write on the credit side. Yeah. And then any bank amount, we pay them, you write on the debit side. Any purchase return, we write on the debit side. Sorry, I said credit debit side, yeah. Uh, discount received on the uh, debit side. So we paid it. Which side do you record it? Bank payment. Which side do you record it? Bank payment. This is the one we record. Yeah, thank you. We record on the debit side. Five, five, five. Okay, and you write the name of, um, thank you people, a Giant Limited. Yeah. Okay. My question, when we have, a, I have asked you that question. You gave me right answer. I'm asking you again. You know, we are Majestics. Our business is Majestics. And Giant is one of our suppliers. We have paid them five, five, five pounds. We paid them. What happened to our liability? Did, did it go up or down? Because of the payment, our liability reduced. Well done. Thank you. Down, reduced, gone down. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. That is correct answer. If you buy, if we buy from him again, our liability going to go what? Our liability going to go up, right? If you buy goods on credit, liability is going up. Well done. And that is our question number four. Question five about petty cash. And again, regarding petty cash, I just recently uploaded a video that is from IGCAC, about 15 minutes. Uh, definitely good for you people. Petty cash, let's, let's uh, do that question on petty cash. Here we go. Petty cash, what is a petty cash? It's small expenses, yeah? You record the small expenses. You don't bother your uh, higher accountant, top accountant, every then and there asking for money, rather you keep some money. Okay, so, Part of double entry, uh, books of prime entry and part of double entry system, if it is set, that means well, we are going to do the double entry only for these items, yeah? But let's see what is the question. This is a summary of petty cash transaction. Bus fare paid, no VAT. You know, one of you asked me regarding no, if there's no VAT, you just write the gross amount, yeah? It's straightforward gross amount. You don't do any VAT calculation. Okay, what happened to, okay, it was a little freezed. Okay, notebooks purchased, 16 plus VAT. Something is, yeah. Can you please give me the VAT for this notebook purchased? How much is the VAT? I'm doing on my calculator in front of you, but I'm expecting calculator, calculation from you. Thanks, by Alexandra says 3.2, so does Marina. Yeah, it is 3.2, it's good to do handy. Thank you, Janice, 3.2. Okay, and you meant to enter these items. So let me tell you, petty cash book is kind of your take on date, amount, uh, detail given. That is, I would say this much is debit side, and these are your credit side. Credit side means money out, and debit side means money in. Balance brought forward 250 pounds, you might have collected from your top cashier. And from that, you already bought some pencil, spent some amount office stationery, office expenses, travel expenses, their VAT expense. There could be more, like cleaning could be there. All the small items, like could be refreshment or entertainment, like tea or coffee could be there. You can put it into the office expense at, at this time, yeah? Now, so, uh, our, another question was bus fare, wasn't it? Just write down bus fare in the detail. And what is the total amount? 6.45. And bus fare goes into the where? Office expense or travel expense? Of course, travel expense, 6.45. Four, five, and you got full marks here. And notebooks purchase, you write down notebooks, notebooks, and now hold on, 16 pound is net, yeah? 16 is for notebook, and 3.2 is for your uh, VAT, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19.2 is going to be the total, and that's it, yeah? Finally, how much is the totals here? You know, the totals. 
we get the total um, 29 and uh, fifth, uh, 16 gives you 45. This gives you 6.45. This gives you 3.20. And these I need to add up. Add up means basically you're going to get a balancing figure here. I, I'm checking, changing another color pen. How much money you started with? 250, isn't it? How much money you started with? 250. So of that, from 250, how much you spent? Did you not spend this much behind pencil and bus fare and notebook? Answer is yes. How much you spend it? 29 plus 6.45 plus 19.2. You spent 54.65, right? You spent 54.65, but balancing how much is left? From 250, if you spent 54.65, how much is left? Minus 250, we're left with 195.35. That should be a positive figure. 195.35, that is your balance. CD, CD becomes balance BD if you meant to do it, which you're not meant to do here. And when you add all these things, like this 29 and, and 6.45 and all, uh, including the balance CD, it gives you um, this 250. Thank you, those of you who are working, I can see your answers. Um, you people are doing it great, yeah. So how much is this spent? We said 54.65, that might be needed, but we're not sure yet. Um, let's go to number C. Uh, what are the three accounts, general ledger? Yeah, record the above transaction. So we do have three accounts here. One is office expense, one is travel expense, one is VAT, that's it. And all of these are what? Tell me, oh, they didn't ask. <laughs> the debit or credit items they just asked those uh those what do you call it expenses so office expense is there travel expense is there and uh, how many they asked three isn't it yeah VAT yeah yeah VAT thank you thank you Alexandra <clears throat> okay moving on anything else yeah what is the amount the cash should have been withdrawn from the bank to restore the impressed system impressed was 250 wasn't it how much you need to and how much was available balancing figure? Balancing was 195.35. Balancing was 195.35. How much you need more? Yeah, thank you, Janice, Alexandra, all of you. You still need 54 point, means whatever you spent, you need that much money to make it 250. So that should be right answer, 54. <coughs> Excuse me, 65 is right answer. Boom, boom, good going. So these are the nodes and coins uh, now in the petty cash box. You can multiply and get your answers four times by 20 equals to 80, seven times by 10 equals to 70. I'm not doing it uh, because um, the relevant question is not ne uh, needed here. The question here is each petty cash claim is accompanied by a petty cash voucher. You know, it's a voucher which needs to be authorized, signed by the people to be claimed and for the valid reasons it should be claimed. Now, what is the question? Question is select two details that should be shown on the petty cash vouchers. There are many. <laughs> do you think name of the director should be there? <laughs> what do you think? Signature of the claimant, what do you think about it? I'm putting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. Which one you think should be there? Okay, balance of the cash in the uh, petty cash. Balance of the cash. Do you think balance is shown on the voucher or on the petty cash book? Balance CDBD, where does it show? Petty cash or, vo or voucher on the petty cash book. The next one is the amount of cash being claimed. How about this? Then amount of impressed. <laughs> yeah, you people are right. Those of you giving me answer two and five is right answer. All these are shown into the where? Uh, like, you know, balance of petty cash, then balance CDBD, then impressed level, all this shown in the petty cash book itself and name of the director oh my gosh it's not needed here <laughs> name of the directors you can use it for buying of non-current assets right any non-current asset you're buying or any um, like higher stuffs you're buying number six it looks like a trial balance but what did they say they said again double entry and all but it could be yeah it, it is a trial balance in the exam you can expect a trial balance here people again your pearls dead click dealer that's going to help you uh, here. Okay, those of you who don't know what is a pearls, let's write it down quickly. P E A R L S. Pearls, P for purchases, E for expenses, F for assets. All these are debit. Nice and simple, yeah? R for revenue, L for liar, B 
latest as for sales or income, revenue or income. These are credit. That's it. Well, else is there? Life is easy. Dead click is there. D E A D in the dead click. C L I C. D means deb debit. C means credit. E for expenses. A for assets. And D for drawings. So that drawings was not covered in the pearls. And here, L for liability, I for income, C for capital. Yep. Okay, so with that note, quickly give me the answer. I'm just going to tick it. Um, I'll purposefully do some mistake. So let's see who makes me correct. Plant and equipment is an asset debit. Inventory is a current asset debit. Bank overdraft is a liability credit. Petty cash is credit. SLCA is a debit. PLCA, liability credit. VAT owing to HMRC is a liability credit. Okay, tell me which one I did a mistake so far. Which one is a mistake I have done so far? Tell me. Yes, thank you, Marina. Petty cash. Thank you, Janice. Petty cash. I did, <laughs> I did a mistake on petty cash. Petty cash. Then cash. Cash book, petty cash book. Both of these are debit. Why? It's an asset. You have money available. Money is always an asset. Okay. Well done. Okay. Capital level, credit, loan, liability, credit, sales, um, credit, sales, return, credit, purchase, debit, purchase, return, credit, discount, received income, credit, uh, discount, allowed, debit, we just, okay, which one I did a mistake now, tell me, from this capital and all, which one I did a mistake, sales return, <laughs> Jenny says SR, sales return, Karina says sales return, yeah, why, why, sales return is not credit, no? No, it's debit. It's the opposite of sales. It's a reduction in income. Okay? That's great. Okay. Now, whether wages, motor expenses, rent and rates, oh my gosh, telephone expenses, uh, sub, uh, everything here. Yeah. Now, subscription, it sounds like a, if it's an expense subscription to a gym, is an a, a debit, expense debit, everything is debit here. Make sense? Let's check our answer. Oh, we didn't check this one. These are right answers anyway for number three and number four. These are right answers. And even number five, that was so obvious. That's why we didn't check it. But I, I would like to check these answers, the, 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 this one trial balance here for you people. Why? Let me show you something. Trial balance is a tool and technique to check the arithmetical accuracy of eligible. It's, it's a list of balances, which shows your debit equals to credit. Yeah. If your debit side equals to credit, that means your works are good. You have done a good work. Okay, you have done a very good work. Well done. Number six is done and good. Done and dusted, <laughs> we'll call it. Number seven, a bit of double entry could be there, but let's see what it is. This is a summary of Rand Limited's account in Majestic's purchase ledger again. Majestic is the owner. Runs the business. Rand Limited has agreed to allow Majestic to make payment, making it slightly bigger by the, uh, yeah, that's a good one. By the last day of the second month following the month of invoice. So let's get straight into the action. Yeah, the month of invoice is July. Following the month, July, August is first month and September is the second month. Are you understanding me? So, reading it again for you people, this is a summary of Rand Limited's account in Majestic's purchase ledger. Rand Limited has agreed to allow Majest Majestic to make payment. How much credit we got it from Rand Limited? We means Majestic got it. Last day of the second month, following the month of invoice. So month of invoice is July. Following means after that month is August and second month is September. So for this month of July, which date is your payment date? Tell me who writes me the right answer. I'm just asking you a question right now, straight away. I'm not reading the requirement here. 
last date, Janice, be careful. Hmm? They said last date, last day, sorry, last day. So following the month of, uh, um, following the month is after July, August comes, that's the first month and September. Yeah, now you're correct. So after July, August comes and then that's the first month and the second month is September. And the second month, last day, last day, last day means 30th of September. That is the right answer. Have a look here. That is the question going to be. Complete the trade table below by inserting the total of um, transactions with RAND Limited in each of the month of July, August, and September. Show the dates. Showing the dates. Uh, da, 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 da. Payment should be made. That is the question. Payment should be made. So transaction in July, you already gave me that answer. September is the right answer. But how much is the amount? You need to add this to 1500 and... 2760. Can someone do it? Okay, I got some answer from Marina. I'm doing it as well. 4260 is the right answer. 4260. Okay, for August, when are you going to get, uh, when are you going to pay for August? August gone, then September, then? You agree with me? This is going to be October? Yeah, that's correct answer. How much money is there? August? Oh, loads. Of, oh, not loads. Of, be careful. Invoice. Okay, I got some answer from Marina, but uh, invoice you add, but credit note you, minus, don't you? There are a couple of credit notes and a couple of invoices. So Marina says 11839. Let's try to prove it, whether it's right or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should pay 697, not 40, come on, 6970 minus 7175 minus 356 plus what I'm doing, come on, my calculator, the digital calculator, <laughs> 6970. Can someone else also do it? Only Marina has done a minus uh, 2175 minus 356 uh, plus uh, 7400. Oh, well done, Marina. Yeah, 11839 is the right answer. 11839, yeah, liable to pay to the bottom. And next one is September. So September, October, November. Yeah. So that should be paid in November. And how much? This minus that should be the answer. How much is that though? For no, um, transaction in September, 650 was invoice and 206 is credit note. It makes it down. 444. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, Janice. Well done. Okay, a little more. Statement of account. Okay, Majestic has received a statement of account uh, below from uh, Rand Limited. A statement of account uh, basically is a statement from your supplier, which you can always match it, uh, along with your um, invoices or T accounts. Yeah. So in the statement of account um, over the month of July, August, and September, there are some goods and goods returned, and then again goods and goods returned given. Okay, I don't know what is the question going to be. It can be a random question, but what is the question? Using the table um, data, using the data in A, A means all of A. Yeah, which two items missing from the statement of account by clicking the relevant items, you can remove your selection. Okay, basically they have given you some items. Hmm? Invoice number 1442, is it given? Answer is yes, it is given. Yeah, invoice number 1450, is it given? Answer is yes, it is given. Invoice number 1502. Is it given into the statement of account? Answer is not yet. Invoice number 502 is not written into the uh, statement. So that's number one. Invoice number 1510, is it there? Yeah, it is 1510, 1510, well done. Invoice number 1520, is it there? No, I don't see anything, 1520. So, so far that's credit note number C0355. C055, actually this three is a mistake. C055 is there, is there. Yeah, it is, it is a good return. Credit note number 0058 um, is there. It is there. Then credit note uh, is uh, C060. Ah, it's there, it's there. Now, you can say yes, this check, but only two being asked. We already found these two. We don't know any check number or anything else. So our answers are these two. Does it make sense? Yeah, the most... A relevant answer is this too. So don't go along with the check. 
that's that. Uh, let's see more. On 10th of October, Majestic re received an invoice from Rand Limited, the invoice shown below. Now there a name and address given and VAT and two Majestic and October date given, invoice number given. Uh, this much, 750 items, the product code number and at the rate of 80 pence total money and VAT in total and uh, from premium discount uh, given. Uh, this is your delivery note and this is your invoice, isn't it? Again, it is there, so many items that the, the date is given uh, a eight we received and 10 to it pay, which is not bad. And what is consider and one question for Marina, reasonable time frame to raise and in 30 days, 30 days, you must raise your invoice within 30 days, okay? Not more than that. The earliest is the best. The normal business norm is within a week we sent it. Like, why would you wait for long, long, long? Never. Send it uh, today, delivery note, uh, goods and delivery note, and send next day. <laughs> no problem with that, yeah? But there might be some return and also ultimate final. One week uh, is a very good uh, norm, not more than a month. So the earliest is the best. And blah, blah, here. Yeah. What is the question? So many things there. Check the delivery note and invoice answer the following. First question, has the invoice been raised a reasonable time? Oh, that was the question, yeah. Yeah, within, if it is within the 30 days time, that's definitely uh, more, less than 30 days should be reasonable. This is within a couple of days time. Absolutely correct. That is the normal business norm. I, don't, I will not wait for many, many long time. Otherwise, there will be a uh, chance of uh, bad debt. So is that a yes or no? Of course, yes. Yep. Second one, has the correct amount of goods being invoiced? Now, in the delivery note, you don't get the amount, but the quantity is 750 correct and 750 correct. Uh, I don't see there is a no answer. You must say yes with this, don't you? And next one, has the correct product been invoiced? Have a look here. Product code is this G967, which is this G967. Wow. Everything looks like yes, yes, yes to me. Let's go over this D and we're going to check the answer. The customer pays within 10 days. Okay, so that means he is allowed um, to get the prompt payment discount, PPD. And prompt payment discount is done on the invoice amount, 720. Hmm, what is the question by the way? Calculate the net VAT and the gross for the discount. That's it. Can you please do it for me? On this 720, you are allowed to do 10%. So that is your gross amount, 72. You agree with me? 72 is the discount you can get now. But that is inclusive. I repeat, that is inclusive. No, 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 no. 10% is the, this is, uh, have a look here. Uh, read the question carefully. Prompt payment discount only, yeah? So you're going to do the gross amount for discount. No, people. It's not, they're not asking you the invoice amount. They're asking you the discount amount. Do you understand me? It's not like that. Uh, get the invoice amount. Yeah, maybe 72 when you deduct, then you get amount, whatever it is. That is invoiced, revised, invoiced. Yeah, uh, but that is not being asked. Can you read the question I'm reading and highlighting or underlying? Calculate the net weight in total amount to be shown on the credit note. To be shown on the credit note. And credit note means... Um, in the uh, discount receipt, CN or CR we use for the discount receipt. Yeah, what the discount is 10%. Discount is 10% on 720. So 72 is the discount. Prompt payment discount is how much? 72. Do it. We don't need to do it. It's very obvious. 10% is 72. That is your discount amount. And that is always inclusive. Divided by 6. Divided by 6. You get 12. And that is VAT. Yeah, that's correct now. Thank you, Janice. And how would the net amount? Of course, it would be 60 if you take away the 12. Right? Let's see your answer. That would be anyway nice and good. These two are good. All of these are, yes. Yeah, here is the little working you had to do. This is your discount on 720, uh, 720F. And uh, this is uh, inclusive. That's how you do your answer. Couple of more questions, people. Stay tuned. We're going to finish the lecture very soon. So just to stay tuned a few more times. Eight, nine, ten. Few more questions. Double entry. So question number eight. Reading for you. Majestic has received a check. Can you show the answer again? Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Have a look. This is the answer. This is the answer. Yeah. 
Okay. And the video is recorded anyway. You're welcome. Moving on, moving on. Majestic has received a check this amount from a credit customer, Greyhound Limited, and full settlement of the. Why would Majestic receive a check? Because goods sold on credit and they might getting money now. Now, there was no document included with the check to show that transactions were included in the payment. Well, what is the requirement? Let's see. So what document the customer should have included with the check uh, by clicking? You should know the answer by now on the highlight. Along with the money, what, do you, what, what does a customer send us? Tell me, is it a delivery note? Pretty cash voucher? Purchase order or remittance advice? It is a remittance advice, yeah? These are the things, little, little things you need to memorize. With a purchase return or sales return, it's a credit note. With, with the money attached, you said a remittance advice. That's the first thing. Second thing, this is the account of Greyhound Limited in Majestic Sales Ledger. Majestic Sales Ledger means Majestic is the owner and the, even the accountant. And Greyhound is a um, customer. Greyhound is a customer, SL. Sales ledger. So SL is a debit account. A balance BD on the debit side. Invoice, invoice, invoice means more credit sales to Greyhound. And credit note means my, it's owing going down. And bank means they paid owing going down. And credit note again owing going down. Let's do the balancing here. Balance CDBD. I'd like to do it. Um, 1975 plus 760 plus 1300 plus 234. How much is the total? 6375. 6375. I don't know whether it's needed or not, just doing it. Yeah, you better do as well. Of that, if you take away the items left here, minus 200, minus 2190, minus 360. How much you left? This much, 3625. Right? 3625. But you know how much the. Um, Okay, just um, I'm doing this much only. 3625, 3625 so far left. You can call it balance CD. Yeah. And that becomes balance BD, 3625. So you are Greyhound. Do you agree with me that Greyhound is still OU 3625 and they should give you that much money, shouldn't they? But how much money they give you? They give you 3225. Did he clear everything? Did Greyhound clear all the money? Of course not. But at the top, they said, oh, full settlement. Where is the full settlement, man? There's something wrong. You still have to pay me money, more money. How much is more money? 3625 should have been paid, but they have paid us how much? 3225 minus 3225. 400. Still 400 needs to be paid. So what is the question? The check Greyhound has uh, resulted in an... In and what? Overpayment. Request another check. Issue credit note. Underpayment. This is an underpayment, yeah? Underpayment. They didn't. In order to res uh, resolve the problem, Majestic should. Should what? Request another check, shouldn't he? Give us more money. Request another check. Request check. And from Greyhound. For how much of amount? 400 should be paid, which will clear the outstanding balance. Do you agree with me? Let's check our answer. Yeah, of course, remittance payments, they have paid us less, less by 400. We should request uh, uh, another check from them, which will clear the problem. That's your number eight. Couple of more questions, people. So stay tuned. Still, initial trial balance could be here. Let's get going. The following account is in the sales ledger at the, at the close of the day on 3rd of September. Inside the balance CDBD with the date and detail. See, date and detail. Oh, it's a fantabulous video on balancing. Uh, I made some jokes of, over here. Uh, okay, it's taking time. Like balance CF or BF. I say balance BF. What is this? Balance boyfriend. <laughs> it's not a boyfriend bought for us. Okay. Okay, 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 insert the date and blah, blah. We can do it. It's a T account. Yep. It's a SL account, sales ledger, Kingsland. The SL is Kingsland. Balance BF and credit sales. And then they paid and credit note. You just need to do balance CDBD. Can you not do it? Answer is, of course, we can do it. Can you please do and tell me the total and balance CDBD even? Let's do it. We check which side is bigger. Clearly, this side is bigger. Writing it down here. 
2067 plus 3405, you get 5472. 5472. You write the same figure on the opposite side, 5472. That's how you do balance equity. Take care of these two items. Um, what are these items? Minus 1056 minus 605. How much is left? 3811. Is that correct, people? Have you done it? That is what you call a balance CD. And you know the balance CD becomes balance BD on the opposite side after the total. 3811 becomes your balance BD. Yeah, CD BD taken. What is the date for CD? Tell me. Who knows it? The last date of the month, right? Balance CD is 30th of September. And what is the uh, date for the balance BD? Tell me. Come on. What is the date here? First date of the... Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. First date of the next month. Thank you, Janice. Boom, job is done. You should get your full marks. We do have a few more uh, items there. Um, number D, complete the following statement of account to be sent to Kingsland by dragging the individual transactions be in below into the second column the statement of account, entering the amounts outstanding. Okay, okay, a statement of account, opening balance, we can copy paste, we do have all the items here, copy paste 2067, let's write it down. 2067, then there is a one invoice only. Invoice, and there's the number always should be, but how much is the invoice for? It's 3405. 3405. You know, you need to do a running balance way here yeah? after every transaction into the final account entering the amount. So the amount is for 3405. But what does it do? You already have some balance from your customer plus 3405, isn't it? Yeah. So let's do it 2067 plus 3405. How much it is? 5472. This is called running account, running balance. 5472. So 5472. And uh, then there are a couple of minuses on the opposite side 1056 bank and 605. 1056, 605. Before I forget the figures, I'm writing it out. Bank or check or CN credit note. So from that figure, I'm just making 1056 out, which is 4416, 4416. And then of that, I take away minus 605. How much is left? 3811. That is exactly, we don't, we didn't need to check all these things. That exactly looks like our a balance CDVD, which should be the right answer. Have a look here. 3881 was the right answer. And even at the bottom here, running balance 3881, the right answer. Are we moving to the last task? Answer is yes. So just a few more minutes. I'm going to finish it for you people. It's an accounting equation mostly we're going to do. Here about show the accounting equation. Asset equals to capital plus liability, isn't it? Asset equals to capital plus liability. How much is your asset? Motor vehicle is an asset. Inventories are your asset. Cash is your asset. Liability, only one liability, which is 12,000. Okay, so what are your total assets? Come on, quickly write me. I'll be doing only one, this one. Rest I'll leave for you to do homework. 29,000. Plus, because 12,100 plus uh, 6,375. Your total asset, 29,000, I didn't add. 20, how come it's less than 20? Okay, 29,000, yeah? Plus, inventory is 12,100 plus 6,375 is your, um, yeah, it is 47,475. 47,475. I was right answer. Of that takeaway asset, um, from this, if you take away 12,000, yeah, 12,000, minus 12,000, asset minus liability should be your capital. Your capital is 35,475. 35,475. Boom, boom, well done. Leaving the B for you. I know you can do it. Is the sales day book prime, or books a prime entry? No, it is not. Going over some capital and revenue expenditure. Capital income, revenue income, capital expenditure, revenue. Received cash for goods sold. Received cash for goods sold. Income. But it said revenue income, right? 
purchased a motor vehicle, motor vehicle, non-current asset, capital expenditure. Yes, asset. Purchase goods for resale. Purchase, it's an expense, revenue expense. Then purchase goods for resale. Again, purchase, again, expense. But revenue expense, day-to-day -day expenses. Received a check from a receivable income, but revenue income. Received cash from owner. Anything introduced by the owner is a capital. Capital income for the business. Super duper, well done. Is that all? No, little more. Uh, we can ignore all the fear. Uh, just checking it in it, we can do our answer here. What would be the uh, code, alphanumerical code I can see? Uh, it's taking the first three. They must have told you at the over here and uh, uh, next to um, um, other two items. So here, Nimbus Limited, how do you do it? N I M, N I M. Is there any other with N? No, so it's zero one. If there's anyone with N, that would have been zero two. That's no. So R O G, -R, Roger. Is there anyone with R? No. So R O G, zero, one again. And do you see, we have finished it even before uh, one hour, 30 minutes. That is your answer here. Uh, only this one I gave you as homework, only one homework and rest you do like this. Well done, I can appear on the camera now. You can appear on the camera now. Uh, you can open your cameras. Congratulations. You can give a big clap. Uh, yes, you can show, come up with the camera. Uh, I no problem to see your cameras and come up on the cameras. Well, well done. Your questions, people. That's how you get full marks, 100 marks. You know, it's a, it's a big uh, module, I know. Um, it's going to be a little bit, uh, a bit of noisy from my side, uh, but uh, I hope you can hear me clearly, yeah? Just little confirmation. Is my voice clear, Janice? Yeah? Voice good, you can hear me clearly? Okay, okay, Alexandra, thank you. Well done. Congratulations on completing this uh, um, revision class with me today. I hope it has increased your confidence level. This is a recorded, I will upload either my YouTube or anywhere, um, any other platform. Just wanted to let you know, don't ignore that free materials. This is a 60 minutes free classroom from my side. Let me give you, I will, I'll give you, I'll send you via email.